I did a speedrun to see how fast I could get round 100 on every Black Ops 3 Zombies map in 2023. Now, this doesn't include Chronicles because I literally ran out of storage in my D drive. Chronicles is gonna have to be its own video. Now, as always, starting off with Shadows of Evil, the speedrun high round strategy is way different compared to the actual high round strategy, and it's extremely fast. Basically, what you wanna do is open up these stairs so you can go up them, and you do not wanna open the spawn room door. You have to keep that close for the speedrun strategy if you're wondering how i have the pack punch camo from revelations it's just a mod that allows me to have infinite gobble gums and it gives me all these camos it's not really anything too special it's not cheating because i do need the infinite gobble gums I, there was no way i was doing this with classics and then after you open up those stairs you want to head down here and literally just sit here for the first couple of rounds i'd say about the first four or five rounds you just sit here kill the zombies with the alcar and rk5 and then after that you have to basically open up the canal district and you can you can instead go to the waterfront and open up that door but it is risky because there is a death barrier that will just kill you instantly on round three i open up the canal district really so i can get the gobble gum machine it, really when you have mega gobble gums i don't know why people don't just spam them it seriously makes the rounds go by way quicker but of course there are gobble gums i'm not allowing myself to use i'm not allowing myself to use flavor hex power vacuum near-death experience flavor hex and round robin of course because those are way too overpowered and they're banned on the bo3 leaderboards which i do plan on maybe putting some of these on the leaderboards or at least trying to get them submitted i then hit the gobble gum machine and get the most useful gobble gum out of all the alcam when i don't even have the apothecary servant clock give a clap up for that but at least i get shopping free so i can triple hit the gobble gum machine and get raindrops which is 100 percent the best gobble gum in the game if you don't agree then i don't know what's wrong with you but yeah and no i'm not counting power vacuum because that's just a whole different beast yes that's obviously the best gobble gum in the entire game no sh so then of course using my raindrops i can just spawn in death machine and insta kill and instantly go through these rounds also raindrops is the way i'm getting the perks because really who's gonna buy the perks when you're trying to do a speed run i then use the trim to travel to the footlight and waterfront district because of course like i said there's death barriers so i can also get the sword symbols as well and the sword is the only reason you're able to do this speed running strategy i do buy double tap though just so i can kill the zombies faster and also because it takes less raindrops for me to actually get all the perks i'm pretty sure there's only seven perks on shadows of evil but i could be wrong then get little arnies from the mystery box but i really don't need it all you don't need little arnies they're pretty much useless the main reason i'm hitting the box though is so i can get the dingo because they're real the dingo's really good for the insta kills and i guess the luck was on my side today because i did manage to get the dingo my second box set which was awesome of course when you're doing speed runs like this you always want to cycle through your gobble gum cycle so you can always have raindrops because they just speed up the round so significantly it's actually insane i then put in the code using beast mode so i can get the sword you don't even need the upgraded sword it's actually ridiculous you only need the normal sword and i've showed you before in my easter egg completing video i you can do this glitch with the sword that's why you don't even need the upgrade sword because the upgrade sword can't even do that why is the normal sword better than the upgrade sword? I have no clue. I then placed the apothecary egg on this octopus statue, and there's a whole bunch of zombies spawn in from this one window. I'm pretty sure I did a little bit of spawn manipulation there, but I could be wrong. While filling up this octopus statue, I almost actually die. I got triple hit. Luckily, I just I have such a good reaction time, you know? No, I really don't. I then do my last octopus statue, and then I nuked the round. There's I'm pretty sure the round timers for like when you're supposed to end the round with a nuke because if you're playing the most optimal way possible and killing the zombies as fast as possible but I, I clearly wasn't doing that i also got the last piece of the apothecary servant which is awesome you 100 percent need the apothecary servant for this as well i'd be lying if i didn't say though that the apothecary servant is not carried by gobble gums it 100 percent is and as you saw i threw that on little arnie so i can have time to build the apothecary servant it, even though apothecary servant gets carried by gobble gums it doesn't make it any less fun to use and because i've opened up the waterfront and footlight district doors there's no longer a death barrier there so i'm able to hit this gobble gum machine which is right next to the this high round strategy which is awesome and this is basically the high round strategy for the entire game it's really fast it's only two spawns you don't even need to get pack a punch open that's how crazy this is if you have megas you don't need to get pack a punch open i don't know if you need to get pack a punch open or not with classics i'm assuming you do 
it but you still only have to get the normal sword it is so ridiculously fast it's actually insane of course on the earlier rounds you can easily take care of the marquas because you have the dingo and they don't have that much health but on the higher rounds when they have a bunch of health you're gonna have to start using the silver protector to just instantly kill them it is annoying though because the silver protector will just instantly grab the drops as soon as there's something so if you want to save an insta kill when you have a death machine to maximize the amount of time you have an insta killing zombies he says no to that he's just gonna pick it up and destroy everything when you have something like a raindrops alchem or even a cashback you can just spam your puff and servant back and forth between the two spawns the, I'm pretty sure the high world record for Shadows of Evil speedrun is like 2 hours and 40 minutes or something crazy like that. I mainly didn't get anywhere close to that. I got 3 hours because I'm pretty sure they were maximizing the amount of time they were using this strategy on the earlier rounds. So that's probably why. Also not to mention you need to get really lucky with RNG nowadays. Once you start to get to high 40s, you're going to have to start using the sword like this. If you hold down right click to do the slam and then you just spam left click, it will just, I don't even know, it would just do that. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain how it works. It's really easy to pull off though and it's super effective at killing the zombies. I then hit round 50 on Shadows of Evil in an hour, 3 minutes, 36 seconds. Really insane time. I, I'm going to be honest, the round 50 speed run on this map is probably like 50 minutes or something, but uh, still pretty good time nonetheless. Nothing really changes about this strategy, really, the only thing is that you have to be more conservative about your ammo and that's it and there's more zombies nothing really changes you just spam the boss conserve and spam your sword and you're gonna get to round 100 easy peasy i gotta say though this round 90 time is disgusting two hours 27 minutes i've literally never seen that on any other map besides maybe moon i mean i'm pretty sure i got a faster time on shadows of evil than revelations <laughs> if you plan on going for this round 100 yourself and you want to know the goblin guns I use, I pretty much just use Killjoy, Raindrop, Fatal Contraption, Alchemical, and Chopping Free. Chopping Free mostly because I can just get triple hits on one round because the goblin gun just gets way too expensive if you want to double hit. I tried my absolute hardest and spammed the crap out of my two Alchems to try and get round 100 before the three hour mark, but I wasn't able to do it. Still got a very good time though, and that's round 100 on Shadows of Evil in three hours, nine seconds, moving on to the giant. Now, whenever I would start, I would always run to this window on the left, and then I would just wait for the first 15 seconds, and then after that, I would throw my grenade, and it would kill whatever zombies there. Then I would go to the next window that's right next to this one, and throw my last grenade, it will kill whatever zombies over there, and then I'll just try and end round one as fast as possible, and then I'll have to keep the door right there next to me closed, because that's where I have to do the high range strategy. It's a one window strategy. It's very fast. You can get round 100 on here in like 3 hours, 30 minutes, but I, I of course was very terrible at this time so i wasn't able to do that after i finish round one i'll always open up this door and try and hit the gobble gun machine for raindrops or shopping free i get shopping free which is nice this isn't a reset so i'm able to just double hit i do get crate powers which sucks but I, I decided to just keep with it because i was resetting too much for raindrops and yes my mr6 does have a camo on it it's because of the mod i do get a raindrops which is awesome so i'm able to just nuke round two and edit really quickly and another thing you have to keep the teleporter on the top right of the map closed because if you open it it will ruin the high round strategy and it won't be a one window anymore which that means you can't have pack a punch open so basically what that means is you're forced to run crate power and bullet boost in order to get the aits and also get the wonder Watt pack a punch and of course i get the wonder Watt, but i didn't have crate power which is just this was definitely one of the most painful round 100s to do because it's all based on your luck with the box. I, got, I managed to get the BRM pack a punch, which is awesome. You need an LMG so you can put fireworks on it. And you also need the Shiva so you can put dead wire on that. I did manage to get the Wonder Wolf pack a punch, but because I was getting really unlucky with the Shiva, I just decided to restart because I was too far in. I was already on round 24. There was no way. This game managed to go a lot better though as I managed to get the Wonder Wolf pack a punch a lot earlier and I got all my guns which is awesome and this is basically the strategy all the zombies just come from this one kind of doorway right there and the only real things you have to worry about are the dogs they can kill you if multiple of them spawn in so you got to be careful of that 
but really you just have to shoot one waft shot every couple of seconds i was kind of panicking a little bit once i got to the high round so i managed to run out of ammo a lot quicker because i didn't know how to do this high round strategy but now that i look back on it i could probably do this very easily when you're not able to hold them off from getting to the window it doesn't start to get a little bit hectic but it Really, when you have the Wonder Waff Pack Punch, you really can't die. At least when they're coming from only one window. If it's Varrocked, I can understand. It does get a little bit scary when the zombies actually get inside. If you start to run low on Waff family, you have to just train with whatever gun you have Dead Warrior on. I decided to choose the Weevil, and we hit round 50 in an hour, 4 minutes, and 8 seconds, which is awesome. See, the hardest part about this round 100 for Megas is that it really setup is because you can't get the teleporter open that door right there to the teleporter to get pack punch open so you have to just rely on your luck with the box and create power so it's just really painful but once you get set up it's really easy and super fun that being said i did take a couple of downs because i really the waff is not as good as the poth conservant you're gonna take it down obviously the poth conservant is just the go with gobble gums but the wonder waff really doesn't it does not have that much ammo plus it only kills 10 zombies with one shot it's so bad so i had to just resort to using the trap to get to round 100 now this did take me a lot longer to do this round 100 because i didn't really know exactly how to actually hold the zombies off from getting inside so i just decided to resort to using my weevil with dead wire and also using the waft as whenever i could and also using the brm with fireworks and this round 100 took me i'm pretty sure like four hours 50 minutes or something like that it wasn't too bad I've done way worse stuff like Nocturne Toad in round 90 in like 12 hours in. But finally, we hit round 100, 4 hours, 39 minutes, 40 seconds in. It felt so good to be done with this round 100. I did fail a couple of times uh, in like the 80s. It, it really shouldn't have failed. I shouldn't have failed this at all, really. But you can obviously see I'm so happy that I finally completed it. But that was the giant in 4 hours, 39 minutes, 42 seconds. Moving on to Derizen Drac. I'm moving on to Derizen Drac. I do have an auto splitter timer now. So I have one at the top, and that's my just total time in general. And then the one on the bottom is just the total amount of time it took to complete one round. And it just resets itself after I complete the round. It's so awesome. But it stopped working once I download the boy client, which sucks. But I really don't care. As long as I'm able to play without worrying about any cheaters or hackers crashing my game. Now, this was actually done before I had the boy client, so I did put myself at risk, but I was playing on an offline mode, so I don't really think so. And of course, I was resetting until I got raindrops. You always want to reset until you get raindrops, of course, because it just speeds up the first couple of rounds. And then after I got raindrops, I would just hit the mystery box, or wait. What I actually meant is I would try and hit the gobble gum machine after and try and get shopping free so I could open up the entire map. Now, I do take this pathway of shopping free because the other door you have to keep closed for the strategy I'm using, which is the fastest strategy on DE. So it does ruin the strategy, but it really doesn't matter because there is a faster strategy. Of course, I take my chances to buy anything I can when shopping free. I bought the HVK, the Bowie Knife, and Stamina Up, and then I just try to open up the rest of the map. And of course, I start filling up my Dragon Heads with zombies. I think it's like 7 or 8 zombies you have to do for each one, so that makes a total of around 24, I'd say. And then I can get the Wrath of the Agents. And the main bow I'm going for is the Storm Bow, obviously. Any other bow is kind of mid. I'm pretty sure this is my first time actually hitting the Mystery Pucks on DE, which is hilarious. But I got the BRM and, of course, the Brecci because I need both of them for AATs. And I need the Brecci mostly because the Panzers are just too strong to deal with unless you have a shotgun of some sort, the Brecci being the best. I then shoot this campfire with my Wrath of the Ancients and then I complete that step and now I'm onto the wall except for the power bow or the storm bow and i'm pretty sure we've already done the storm bow upgrade a billion times so you don't need to see it but if really you just gotta go to the urns after you do the wall running and then fill them up with like three or five souls then you gotta get a charge shot get the electricity surrounding it and then shoot the campfires again bring your broken arrow back to the where you found it it will forge it and you gotta put it in the crate right there fill it up with a bunch of souls and then you'll be able to get the storm bow really easy and the storm bow is really the only other thing that you need other than pack punch lmg and the pack punch brecci as for the aets that you need for your whatever lmg that you have you need fireworks of course it doesn't really matter what lmg it is they all do the same thing and then i mean i don't know why you would want the gorgon but anyways 
and then you need a shotgun with turn preferably the brecci but it really just comes down to preference at this point but objectively you would want the brecci i don't know why you would want the haymaker it is kind of bad against the panzers if i'm being honest and then they get set up around 32 minutes in which isn't bad but also isn't the best either i mean i really don't care i'm pretty decent at setting up but i'm not the fastest and now for the strategy you have to keep the door on the left to spawn right there close uh, otherwise zombies will spawn from there and ruin the strategy and you have to open up the door to the gate of course and then you literally just sit here and then use your ats whenever you can use turn whenever you can and then shoot your storm bow and that's it it's really easy now what i didn't mention i forgot you also need the ragnaroks too just so it makes it easier to deal with the panzers it, because it also acts like the death rate it brings up the panzer and then you can just easily kill him with your shotgun and it also kills the zombies <laughs> surrounding you, so you don't have to worry about them. You can just focus on the Panzer really easy. That's really all you need the Ragnaroks for, so you don't have to go to the death ray all the time. Dog rounds are super easy as well. I don't know what it is. They just spawn really fast in this area, so that's nice. Just a free round. As you see, I ended that round in literally 40 seconds or less. And then our round 50 time was also really fast. It was an hour, 8 minutes, 8 seconds. And pretty fast for DE, considering I do have to take a little bit of time to set up. But we did complete the round in a minute, 48 seconds. So rounds are still going really fast, even in the 40s and 50s. Like I said again, nothing really changed about these high round strategies, considering that you have mega gobble gums at your disposal. With classics, I assume it would change throughout the game because you have to worry about ammo more considering you don't only have alchem as your only saving grace towards ammo so that'd probably be the only thing that would change but with megas really you have overpowered stuff like raindrop i also want you guys to take note that the time from round 88 to 97 is nearly one hour which is insane to me like only what 10 not even 10 rounds, 9 rounds takes nearly an hour to complete because there's just so many zombies. And one more thing before we wrap up this round 100, you have to be careful when you're shooting the storm bow because it does make invisible zombies, which they are invincible by the way, so the only way to kill them is with that trap I'm pretty sure, so you gotta be really careful when shooting the storm bow obviously. But finally, after round 99 taking 6 minutes, we finally got round 100 on DE in 3 hours, 57 minutes, and 45 seconds, and 18 milliseconds. But that was round 100 on DE. I hope you guys enjoyed. Goodbye. Nah, I'm just kidding. That was DE round 100, 3 hours, 57 minutes, 45 seconds, 18 milliseconds. Moving on to a map that I was now looking forward to do round 100 on, Zetsuba Noshima. And well, that's lovely. We're getting connection interrupted before we even get into the game. Now, of course, like always, we reset for raindrops just so we can get through the first couple of rounds. Then after getting shopping free, I would usually just open up all these doors, open up the entire map because you need to get set up as quickly as possible before it just becomes too hard. Even on the 20s, it's so hard to traverse that Zabo no Shima. And really, the only good training spot on Zetsubo is in the school room. And even that, that is so difficult to do. I got my first shield part and really you need anything you can get you need the gas mask you need the shield you need everything i don't know why i went for the wonder weapon because like seriously it's not going to help you at all you really the only good strategy like i said is training in the school room so i don't know why i went for it i guess i thought it was going to help me i saw a strategy where it was like a two window strategy in the spawn room but that really didn't work so i had to resort to using the school room strategy and i was struggling with this round 100 a lot i fell about five seven times it was really making me pissed off but i managed to do it. It, it i definitely am never doing this again unless i do classic only round 100 which i i I don't know, that's gonna be even more painful. Like seriously, I like this map. I just don't like how the Thrashers can one-tap you for no reason at all. You can just be just chilling, you're training around in the school room area, and then a Thrasher comes and one-taps you. It's so unfair. And there's nothing you can even do to stop that, because there's no good wonder weapon. The mass moves are alright, but it's only really good if you do the entire Easter egg, which that's just, just a waste of time, to be honest. I got my first part to the KT4 when I was getting all the parts to pack a punch so that's that and then i got my second part to the kt4 from the spider i still don't know why i went for the kt4 it really just slowed down everything and then for some reason build a shield here like i said i saw a strategy that was a two spawn window strategy in the spawn room 
which did not work at all. I don't know what I did wrong, but I clearly don't know how to use the mass move. And yes, I did use temporal gift. I was really running out of ideas for this map, so I just decided to use this because it just makes the death machine's insta kills last longer, which will help me a great amount when I'm doing the high rank strategy. Once I completed all my challenges, which I made sure I got easy ones, I get the electricity or lightning to shock the shield, and I'm able to shock the cage, which allows me to get the last part to the upgrade kt4 because i've already done the boss fight of course and i've already gotten the one part you need from the plant so this was the last part i needed still i i need to ask myself why did i get the upgrade mass move it literally served no purpose i ended up losing it anyways after i died and lost mule kick the only good purpose that it served was that it gave me an imprint plant really which actually saved me i'm pretty sure so i guess doing this was a good idea but also a terrible idea because i wasted time i then get the upgrade kt4 which is called the mazmu like i've said before it's all right it's literally just a worse version of the slick fire if i'm being honest i really barely use this thing it's kind of bad and then we kind of got set up at around 40 minutes in which was it was all right but i the strategy I was using was kind of slow, if I'm being honest. I was better off not even going for the Mazamu and literally just doing the Skull strategy. It would have saved me literally like two hours. And this is what I mean when I say I don't understand the Mazamu. I shot a full charge shot and it did absolutely nothing. It just does that sometimes. I don't know why or how, but yeah, that's why I don't like the Mazamu. I mean, what am I going to do? Pre-patch this thing? So I finally came to my senses and I decided to do the actual good strategy in the Skull Room because it, w it just was not working at all the thrashers was spawning in way too often at least with this the thrashers don't spawn in that often the strategy for sets of really easy you just whenever you don't have your skull just run around the room stay against the wall of course because if you don't you're gonna run into the zombies and die most likely so just stay against the wall to be safe and then just use your alternate ammo types and i'm pretty sure you need dead wire and turn and that's it wherever you have your skull of course there's not really much to be said you can just spam the crap out of that thing and it will get through you'll get through the rounds really quickly and i'm surprised i managed to get around 80 in three hours but I, it's not that hard the spawn rates are pretty fast in this room so you can go through the rounds really quickly especially with the skull i mean it isn't something like bo3 knock where it took me like 10 hours to get around 80 of course the scariest part is whenever you get a thrasher in this room but it rarely often occurs the only thing i don't get why doesn't the death machine do anything to the thrasher at all it doesn't make any sense but other than that i think this map's pretty good the thrashers are really what brings it down to me like i said and all i'm doing right now is just using insta kill and a death machine with temporal gift and it allows me to go through this arm really quick i then got this glitch where my skull kind of wasn't going down like the ammo for it was not going down it was weird i don't know why but it, i decided to just use it because why not but for the last one i decided not to do that and i decided then said put that away and i was getting really scared i was like seven minutes into this round which is crazy for 99 but i managed to complete the round and i got to round 100 so we secured it i am never doing this again i'm gonna be honest unless i do class kicks only like i said which is gonna be painful but we finally managed to get round 100 on that's about in five hours and five minutes and 66 milliseconds that was that's about moving on to the hardest map to get to round 100 on bo3 garage crow v it also happens to be mr t lux five's favorite map <laughs> now onto the easiest map in zombies history i mean garage crow v is so easy it gives you a special up and that literally crashes your game i mean that's so easy so i get shopping free and i buy quick revive so there's less perks i have to get with my raindrops and i start opening up the map i'm also doing the easter egg in an hour 15 minutes so i can get the permanent perkaholic because this map is way too difficult without it at least with the permanent perkaholic it's way easier because you have an infinite number of downs and this map is so difficult even with mega gobble gums mega gobble gums doesn't really make much of a difference for this map unless you're using power vacuum and round robin of course i then turn on power of course so i can get the gorf modules i then get the free points from stamina up and then i get the second part to the shield i get the first trophy i need i never knew you could just get the trophies before you even get out into the step but that's pretty cool i then get my first dragon code cylinder which is the blue one which is of course at the dragon command i then get my last part to the shield and I got extremely lucky here, and on my fourth head of the box, I got the Raygun Mark III, which is obviously the best one to weapon in the entire game. They made it so it can kill up to round 3,000. I then build the shield, which is literally the wonder weapon on this map. I don't care what you say. It's seriously, the Mark III is so 
freaking bad. And now I'm fairly certain I'm on the Mangler stat. This part, I literally got stuck on and failed on so many times and then had to restart. What you have to do actually is have a weapon that's not pack a punch. So I chose the HBK not pack a punch. But really, I didn't even know you don't even have to shoot his arm off. It's just so he runs at you, but he eventually starts running at you anyways. And then I didn't even realize you didn't even have to get his arm off to get him into the like sort of area to suck him up. <laughs> the next trophy I'm doing is really easy. You just got to defend the score pod that's outside the map. And really all you got to do is spam the Mark III. Super simple. I then get the bomb trophy, which is honestly really easier than it looks. You just really got to write down on the Google Docs or whatever on a piece of paper. It doesn't matter. It's super simple I and mean, you just run around do the code correctly if you do it wrong though i've heard that you just it blows up and you die instantly i don't know if you just die but i mean i've never failed this step it's really easy also if you're running why there's just a random loading bar on my screen right now that's because i don't know why i interacted with the dragon to ride it to pack punch and it just like showed up on my screen and won't go away and it stayed like that for the entire game all the way to 100 by the way also at some point be before I like in the hour mark, I tr accidentally got the Chiva and traded it for my Mark III, and uh, it made me so angry. But like honestly, I got the Mark III back so easy because it's so easy to get for some reason. And then I got the AATs, and now I'm able to enter the boss fight, which is honestly super simple because I got IPS, aka in plain sight. I mean, seriously, the Nikolai part of this boss fight is so ridiculous that you just pop in plain sight. Apparently, Nikolai is actually a zombie. Yeah, that's a part of the zombie storyline. You didn't know the part where he actually like ate the flesh and then like he became a zombie. So he doesn't see us, and then we can easily just take him out. It's so nice. Okay, now moving on to the high round strategy, because we've already seen the cutscene before. We've already followed the storyline. We don't need to show that. Um for the high round strategy, you basically just you uh, use AATs, so you want the Vesper, of course, because it's right there, and you either want the M8A7 or the HBK because they're so close to you. You put HBK or M8A7, you give that fireworks, and then you give the Vesper a turn, and th then you can use the Mark III. You keep the Mark III, obviously, because the slow effect with the gun on the left is obviously really good, and you just use the shield. It's really that simple. And also turn on the trap whenever you have it because it just speeds up the rounds even more. And of course, for the Valkyrie rounds, you just go to Dragon Command set up there because the Valkyrie spawns are super slow when you're sitting in that high round strategy place. So you just go to Dragon Command and it's just super fast and you end the rounds really quick. And my time for round 50, I think was an hour 58 minutes and something like 50 seconds, 48 seconds. Pretty fast, but it was because I did the Easter egg. I mean, I really was just tired of failing this map, so I just wanted to complete it finally, so I did the Easter egg, of course. And I completed it in under 115. Is this the round where Lex got the Lex curse? Ah! On round 84, this was a little bit scary. I was four hours in. And then my game just freezes, and then I luckily my game didn't crash, but my recording started doing this random ass crap with the Vesper. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I mean, I was able to just close OBS, reopen it, and then start recording again. I think the main reason why I froze and my game froze is because the recording was like 300 gigabytes or something. <laughs> I then hit round 100 on Garak Rovi in six hours, actually 13 minutes, because I forgot to unpause the timer when I paused it, when I paused the game. So it's actually six hours, 13 minutes, and probably 50, 50 seconds, I think. So that was round 100 in Garak Rovi. Very long one, but it was so rewarding to finally do it. It felt so good, but that was Garak Rovi. Moving on to one of the hardest maps, actually, in Zombies history, Revelations. Now, moving on to 100% one of the hardest maps in Zombies history, literally. It's so hard. It has to give you the Apothecan Servant, the Thunder Gun, the Ragnaroks, and Little Arnies. It's so difficult. I mean, it's so difficult. You can take out a Margul with three shots of the Thunder Gun. As soon as it spawns in, it's so hard it's so difficult they made it so you can pack a punch the apothecan servant i mean seriously like it's so difficult to do that also around 50 in an hour six minutes 30 seconds the high rounds on this map are so difficult it literally makes it so you have to use your ragnarok and apothecan servant that's so hard i mean it's so hard we hit round 100 in three hours 24 minutes 16 seconds that's the longest round 100 i've ever had like what the f anyways guys that was a speed run for round 100 every black ops 3 zombies map uh uh, Chronicles will come soon. I still have to do Shangri-La and all the World at War maps, which is going to be easy, but Shangri-La is going to give me quite a little bit of trouble, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.